In this video, I will be addressing hiding your network name as a security feature. The logic goes like this. If your network is not seen, then no one knows it's there, so it's safe. In that safe scenario, only one person will be using it, because realistically, if there were numerous people connecting, word would get out. Therefore, there was only one scenario that hiding your network name could work, if it was only used by you. But still, there are other cases where not broadcasting your ESSID or network name would not add any security at all. And now, this logic infers that if no one is looking to exploit, then it is safe. Unless, of course, someone stumbles onto it using a particular part, uh, software like NetStumbler. Yet, if a malicious hacker suspects that your wireless network exists, there are tools that can be leveraged to join the unnamed network. So it all depends on some cyber criminal knowing whether it's there or not. Because if they know the wireless network exists, there are methods to join it and steal sensitive information. Suppose your internal network is a marked target and is known to exist, but the cyber criminal doesn't know the network name. Can he or she acquire some unique identifier to connect? The answer is yes. All that is needed is what is referred to as a MAC address. So let's take a look at how the hacker can gain access without the network name, also known as the ESSID, the Extended Service Set Identifier. I'd like to preface this method exercised in this video by stating a relevant fact. There is the previous mentioned uh, ESSID, which has no value when unnamed. But there is also a DSSID, or a basic service set identifier. And notice in the acronym that the word identifier is present. This is another way of identifying the wireless access point. I'm running a virtual machine here called VMware Workstation. Running on this virtual machine is a Linux-based penetration testing tool called Backtrack 5, and it is the second release. I've already loaded it to save time because we don't need to see all that. Um, I'm using a wireless network adapter to connect to a wireless router like most small home offices, regional and branch offices implementing a wireless infrastructure. Now, if I enter the command amon-ng, it shows the chipset and the driver for my wireless network adapter, the chipset and the driver, and Backtrack 5 has assigned a name for the interface, which is WLAN0. And so if I type in airmon-ng start WLAN0, it puts it into a monitor mode, so it can monitor uh, data coming across or to that uh, adapter being used. But now the name has changed to MON0. The interface is still the same, so the name hasn't changed. But then if I type, I mean, then if I type aerodump ng and MON0, it begins to collect data from beacons sent out. And beacons are sent out from wireless devices and uh, such as a wireless router. And I'm going to wait for this to populate a little bit more. Okay. And then I will hit control C and stop it from scanning. This is perfect. Mine is at the top. Notice the ESSID, the extended set the extended service set identifier has no name. Um, it just says length zero. And here's the BSSID, otherwise known as the MAC address, that is uh, physically burnt into the hardware. It cannot be changed. Um, it can be spoofed or it faked, but it cannot be changed. Um, now, if I bring up my the interface to my wireless router it shows the MAC address as C087 and if I go back to backtrack you will see 
that this is C086. It's just one digit off, and that's due to you have a MAC address for the public facing side and the private facing side, public being web and private being your internal network or LAN. And um, also, if I brought up command prompt and typed in IP config, it would also show right here that the last digits are the last hex pairs are 30C086 which matches this exactly 30C086 so the point is that no name there's no name assigned yet the MAC address is there and um, that's all that it takes is a MAC address to go on to the next step in conclusion obtaining the MAC address can be done without the wireless network name as you saw me just do um, and allows certain commands to be run after that to collect data and possibly obtain the passphrase to connect to the wireless network if you if you are still using WEP or WEP it can be done in less than five minutes. Always use WPA2. It's the strongest one. And keep in mind, also, the more complex the passphrase, the longer it will take software to crack the passphrase, keeping your wireless network more secure.